Hi, welcome to Weather and Forecasting. This is Module 3. In the previous module, we talked about the composition of the atmosphere, and we talked about the different layers of the atmosphere and the ways that those layers can be divided up in between ionospheres, or they can be divided up based on their temperature regimes, as well as looking at them as particulate matter and its actual composition and how different compositions or materials tend to settle in certain layers. For example, the mixture of most of the atmosphere is 78% nitrogen, 21% oxygen, and then a little bit of everything else. One of the variable gases being water, which can fluctuate between zero and 4% in its standard amount, and that greenhouse gases like water, CO2, nitrous oxide, methane, all tend to settle in a specific layer that is called the, that is called the stratosphere. Sorry about that. And so we review those things. Now we're going to look at sunlight when it enters the atmosphere, the different things that I can do with sunlight material, whether it be absorb it to add heat or reflect it or scatter it. So here we go, absorption. When sunlight hits a specific particle of the atmosphere, nitrogen, oxygen, carbon dioxide, it can be absorbed. So that energy that is within the sunlight can then be absorbed into the molecule itself, and then the molecule will begin to vibrate farther and faster because it has a greater amount of energy. So that is absorption, where I take in the heat energy. Another thing that I can do is reflect. Now reflection is very specific. When the sunlight hits a particle, if I reflect it, I send it back exactly the same wavelength as it was. So for example, if I look at a mirror, I'm looking at light that was hitting my face being reflected into the mirror and reflected back to my eyes, and it's staying exactly the same. So all of those particles or all of those wavelengths, the photon particles, are maintaining their same wavelength structure. Scatter, on the other hand, is when I hit a particle with my sunlight and I break it up into a longer wavelength, lower energy particle. So if you think back to the last chapter where we, we saw the different particles of light and how I can divide up my photon particles measured on their wavelengths and how higher energy and uh, those particles were things like gamma rays and then I get into things like ultraviolet waves and then I get into bigger stuff like the blues and then I get into my greens, my yellows, my oranges, my reds, my near infrareds, middle infrareds, thermal infrareds, microwaves, TV waves, AM radios, and, and actually FM before AMs. And so I can get bigger and bigger and bigger. So if I take light, and it happens to be ultraviolet, and it hits a particle within the atmosphere, and it breaks up, so it scatters, it breaks up that energy. That energy, that light energy, when it breaks up, has to go to something that is less energy than it was. So if it's ultraviolet, something that would be less energy would be blue, for example. And actually that's part of the reason why the sky is blue, is because when light particles become scattered in our atmosphere, they scatter as blue spectrum. So that brings me to measurements of things, and that's where this term albedo comes in. Albedo is specifically the percentage of reflectivity within an object, and it's measured on a 0 to 1 scale on its set, and you can actually see that here. And so it's the reflectivity of the object. And so you can see cities have an albedo of 0.4 to 0.8, so that's a pretty low albedo. And over here, my dense forest is a 0.05 to a 0.1, and that is also a pretty low albedo. So what that means to me is these are not good reflectors, because the closer to zero I am, the, the better I am at absorbing heat energy or light energy, and the closer to one I am, the better I am at reflecting light energy. So if I pick something that's really reflective, like snow cover, and fresh snow cover is right around 0.7 all the way up to 0.9 on its set of reflectivity. So 
I can take particles and I can absorb them. I can take the sunlight when it enters the atmosphere and I can absorb that energy. I can reflect that energy where I take it and I just reflect it back in the same wavelength it is. So if it comes in red and I reflect it back red, that's the same wavelength, same size wavelength. Or I can scatter it. It hits a particle, it becomes a lower energy, a lower frequency. Just talking a little bit more about reflectivity and scatter and specifically what we're talking about. So the sunlight is hitting particles in the atmosphere, nitrogen particles in the atmosphere, and it's breaking them apart and they are scattering. This process is known as the Riley scatter. And it basically says that there's a natural reaction within the particles of a particular wavelength, specifically what the sun puts out the most of, which is the ultraviolets and uh, violet style light, because that's the greatest amount of photon particle energy that our sun tends to put out. And it turns out that when those particles of light happen to hit our atmosphere, those wavelengths uh, disproportionately break off and break into what we would consider the blue spectra to the eye. There's some other uh, scatter concepts and these are important, especially if you're ever going to study other planets and you want to look at other planets' atmospheric conditions because everything has a, at least a very thin layer of gases that are kind of surrounding it that gravity is holding around its surface. And uh, Mia scatter is actually something that we can look at quite a lot with sunrise. So the reason why sun, sunrise sunsets are perceived as being orange, yellow, colors of a brighter, lower energy, even lower energy actually has to do with angle. And so that's where Mia scatter gets in. Mia just talks about scatter based on angularity of the visible spectrum. And then non-selective scatter, which is the scatter based on clouds. And these can be broken off and be scattered all times of day. And non-selective scatter can even be scattering at night, except for the catch with that type of scatter is that it tends to be thermal infrared, which we don't have an organ to see as a color. So our eyes are an organ, right? They're not seeing non-selective scatter, but we can feel that. So example, at night, if it's very, very cloudy at night, it tends to be a slightly warmer night because the clouds are acting as like a little thermal insulator and the heat energy from the surface of the earth that is re-radiating off of the earth's surface because it spent all day absorbing it, right? Because it has a very low albedo. It is a good absorber of light energy, a bad reflector of light energy, so it absorbed it. Then it's radiating it back out onto the earth's atmosphere and that energy is hitting the clouds and it's scattering it back down towards the Earth's surface in the thermal infrareds. So the frequencies are staying very, very large and we can feel it in the form of heat, hence hot night. Reflectivity and scatter. I'll let you guys look at these things. Transmission is the act of transferring the material as we see it, whether it be absorbed, scattered, or reflected just key terms, fates of solar radiations. I'm not going to hold you accountable to memorizing these percentages, but one of the key things is that whatever comes into our Earth's atmosphere must be balanced. Therefore, I can always figure out where it's gone. And so any energy that comes in as sunlight, it either gets reflected back out, absorbed by the Earth's surface, or observed by particles in the atmosphere itself, and it's reutilized. And once I do this act of absorption, reflection, or scatter of these particles, I then can account for what type of reactions are going to take place. And this is where we get into predictive weather, where we talk about how it absorbed this much energy, high temperatures, high humidity, it absorbed a lot of energy. Now there's a lot of water in my atmosphere. That water is changing phase. It's becoming clouds. Oh, look, we're going to have a rainstorm. So these things are all building on one another in their understandings. Now I might pop ahead a few slides and meet you back because some of these slides are just terms and I want to really get to the meat of explaining this information.